Okay, so the uh, antenna direct drop, and we got the Splatoon 3 Salmon Run Trip, which is amazing. Okay, this video is going to be sort of analysis of the trailer. I've never really done this before, so uh, bear with me. But I'm just going to try and point some stuff out. Maybe you might have missed, maybe not. Um, anyways, uh, first thing you should probably do is watch this for yourself, and then maybe come back to this video. Uh, and be sure to give them a like, this is amazing. Anyways, into the analysis, we get confirmation of the age rating, which is everyone 10 and up, so it's no longer rating pending anymore. Um, of course, game footage not final, of course. This, okay? Includes in a helicopter, think about that. Also, their clothing is different. This does also mean Grizzco is probably not the antagonist of Splatoon 3, so that is something. We've got both Inklings and Octolings here. Uh, we got lamps now, that's nice. This could be like some sort of opening cutscene that plays, uh, because right now it's kind of just like you just super jump in from the void basically. Uh, but in Splatoon 3, if they do this and have a cool opening cutscene like this, where you're jumping out of a helicopter, that would be cool. Also, we got new designs. We got the splatter shot, which we've seen before. Uh, we also have a brush. I think that's the normal brush. And a blaster and something else. You'll probably be able to be able to see it in, later in the trailer. Um, the design of the stage already looks really cool. Okay, so that's a charger. Um, okay, another thing I want to point out is the UI. Um, this is cool, it has a glow effect and different icons for all of the weapons. So we got a blaster, a splatter shot, a roller, and a charger, it seems. So, you know the basic color scheme for those and what the icons might look like. The glow effect reminds me of like the, um, you know when people are coming out with like material like, oh this could be what it looks like, it reminds me of those, because they always seem to have a glow effect. The ink looks a bit better than it does in Splatoon 2. Something I don't particularly like is this meter, because like if this how it if this is how it is in the multiplayer, um, I don't know. It just bars instead of a smooth line. It just doesn't feel quite right. Also, <laughs> these names. Anemone number one. Okay. Um, that is the same amount of time I do believe that it is usually. The ink color for the salmonids is different, and it looks like the lighting is a bit different too. Okay, let's see. The bush is painted. The boss returning from the first game, same mechanics it seems. This face. This face right here. This is gonna be a meme, I'm gonna tell you right now. And it's gonna be followed by this. I will say a fish stick is an inventive name, and this is. It reminds me of. Kind of like the rain guy, the octa shower from the uh, single player mode. Again, the ink is different color that kind of throws me off. Uh, got little propellers on the head, it seems. Okay. So what it looks like is happening here is this guy. He fires a ring, right? 
and then all the ink around you just turns to his color. And if you don't ink and get out of the way quickly, it's kind of just like kamikaze into you. And he doesn't end well. Um, if you, as showcased there, if you cover the area, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like splat zones actually, where if you get a certain amount, it plays the splat zone sound and then covers the entire area. And he gets stuck on the ground, and then that's when you can attack. So it's almost like the um, the Maws from the first game, or the second game I made. And then they just destroy him. Uh, three eggs still, so that is good. And this. This is going to change so much. Hold on. The... Uh, the one that shoots the rain balls is confirmed to be also that guy, the stingray user. Maz is still in the game, and there's the one who shoots out the rain pellets. There's two of them actually. There's the new one, which that devil heavy doesn't look too good. I should really turn this up to HD quality. This is new. The propeller guys. And then over here we got the one that uses Stingray. That was a uh, squid surge dodge thingy. Oh, hold on a second. He had invincibility going through that. He didn't get hit. The ink that was there was from him touching the ink on the ground. But when he dodged, it ignored the hit, and it played the sound. So, that's interesting. Maybe the squid roll or dodge will give you invincibility. Um, that's a new animation. The thing that it's carried in is different. The orange is a different color. And then, there is the killer whale 5 point something or other, which he's expertly using to nail that guy in the face. I think those are different pots, I'm not sure. They might be different color. Um, and there's another one over there. We get a better look at that. And it looks like it powers up over time. And then it becomes very powerful at the end. There's the crab. It looks like it might be a different kind of crab for... It has two fire inmates. Modes, okay. It might be a different kind of crab for Salmon Run, because... You know, Salmon Run's different. All the Mystickers wants them to use his specific gear. And of course, that wouldn't be allowed in regular turn. Okay, Blast, you're doing Blaster things. Uh, the Salmonids still do drop three, something cool. When you throw the egg, it puts a little bit of ink around it, which I feel like that can be abused. I don't know, but it seems like that could be exploited. Also, there's a pan in his mouth. Over here, the ink, uh, the damage, like indication ink, looks to be different. Also, the, there might be dynamic camera movement, like in a you might be able to save, like, the match, a replay of it, like you do in Smash Bros. And then you can, like, dynamically move the camera around, that would be cool. Seems like that's what they're doing. It might just be because they're developers, you never know. And then just throwing it into the basket last second is real cool. Hold on. Okay, so the, um, 
the Tonk animations, or, you know, the Booyah uh, animations seem to be the same. It doesn't appear that there's any different communication options, which that doesn't bode well. <laughs> and then, at the very end, there's this dude, absolute unit of a fish. So he's rocking the chains in multiple belt style with the haircut. That is intimidating. That is so intimidating, in fact. Oh. Also, that is a different logo. Uh, that is a different logo, logo to what is normal. It's more like run down, I guess you could say. And then duct tape. Because duct tape fixes everything. Next wave, so menacing. And then here it is. Splatoon 3 Summer 2022. So like... June, July, August. Three months. It's looking pretty good. Also that phone looks like the bottom of cleats for some reason. Wait. Phone. Phone in, in Splatoon... Why? Okay. Uh, I don't know how Little Buddy's gonna, you know, fit into this. Also, that face is gonna be mean. Uh, the eye colors seem different. I don't think they showcased an orange outline of the eyes in the first trailer. But that would be cool. Also, the hair uh, color change dynamic is really cool. I don't think these this footwear was in Splatoon 2, this shirt was definitely not. Um, there's no headgear, which is confusing. Also, Little Buddy is just drooling right on the infant's forehead. <laughs> that is kind of gross. <laughs> and then is there anything else? No, because Nintendo. Okay. Yes, Nintendo owns this property. Don't sue me for losing your phone. This is fair use. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think there's much in the description. The next wave of Salmonoids Club actually returns in Splatoon 3, both this mysterious new giant Salmonoid picture might be a tougher challenge than swimming upstream. I don't know, fish swim upstream all the time, so probably not that. And, yep, nothing terrible. Okay, well... I guess put your predictions in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.